Good morning. Good morning, Kristen. <laughs> I used uh, another computer. This computer, maybe the camera is not so good, but uh, can you hear me, right? Sounds great. <laughs> okay, so we continue to the story of enlightenment. So I, I put the link in the chat. So today we're gonna talk about Ah Hongren. So Hongren is the teacher of the sixth patriarch, the legendary Hui Neng and a student of the fourth, Dao Xing. Mm. So he received the Dharma transmission from Da Yi Dao Xing. Last time we talked about Dao Xing, right? And passed on the symbolic bow of the robe and the robe and transmission to Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch. So we go on biography. So not too many details about his uh, life. His childhood, he was born in Huangmei, uh, family named Zhou, father abandoned family, but Hong Ren displayed exemplary filial duty in supporting his mother. And uh, in the Chinese version, we, uh, Hong Ren had very good, had a very good relation with his mom. But uh, our, our, the topic today is to, the following Chan study under Dao Xing. Under the age of seven or 12, you see that the historical record is not uh, accurate. Could be seven, could be 12. Hong Ren left home to become a monk. That's a very early age and become and began his studies under Dao Xing, the fourth patriarch, who according to tradition immediately recognized his insight. And you see the, the following is our key point today. Dao Xing met Hong Ren on a road in Huangmei. Dao Xing asked his name. Hong Ren replied, I have essence, but it's not a good name. <laughs> and his teacher Dao Xing said, ask what what name it is? Then student Hong Ren said, it is essence of the Buddhahood. <laughs> Dao Xing replied, have you no name? Hong Ren said, no, because essence is empty. With this Dao Xing passed on the teaching and the robe, making Hong Ren the next page of Chan. We have a Chinese version too, just to give me a sec. Good morning, Ms. Zen. So everything's fine. So the, the, the Chinese version Actually, uh, the English translation is very, uh, is, is okay. But um, I wanna translate from my side too. So Dao Xing asked that this little boy, either, either seven years old or 12, and what's your name? And Hong Ren asked, and Hong Ren said, I have a name, but it's not a common name.
then what what is your name or what is your essence? So in Chinese, Xing and the Xing, the quality and the name, they have same pronunciation. What's your name? Xing shen me. And what's the essence? The essence and the name, they have the same pronunciation. So in the Chan, we always have this kind of talk in the name, in the same topic, but there's a different understanding outside and inside. Remember? So the I have essence, but it's not common one. But the the teacher asks, what's your name? But uh, in Chinese, the name and the essence has same xing and xing is, is same pronunciation, but different character. <laughs> so it's kind of tricky here. What's your essence then? Or what then the Hong Ren, the students answered, is the Buddha nature. You see, it's the essence of the Buddhahood. That's why the translation is kind of right here. Then the Dao Xing replied, have you no name? Then the, it's another, you don't have name. Uh, then, so they play tricks between the Xing and the Xing, so the name and essence. They talk about different things, but the, 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 yeah, they just uh, try to want to show the Buddhahood here. Buddha nature. And the Hongren answered, no, because essence is empty. Because the Buddha nature is empty. There's no, you know, it's not graspable, it's not, uh, you know, attachable, it's not, it's inexplainable, unspeakable. <laughs> so even at so young age, seven or 12, Hong Ren can understand his essence so well. Actually, it's not only his essence, it's my essence, it's your essence, it's everybody's essence, the Buddha nature. It's just like uh, an empty space, but every form and name right now is in front of you, a computer, a, te a desk, a cell phone, my image, your body sensation, every contents contain this empty space, which is formless, while every form is in this formless space. I, as Einstein said, the form, the material world, is the extension of the empty space. Do, do, can you realize, realize it now? So, the empty space is your, in, uh, in um, if I put in a, analogy, our conscious awareness is like an empty space, it's formless, it's uh, unspeakable, it's, it's, has no size, it's infinite big and infinite small, like empty space, while every sensory objects like uh, like uh, this car key, like my image, like my body sensation, like your memory, like your room, is included in this conscious mind, in this empty space. And every form and name, body sensation, memory, you know, relationship, oh, whole nature, all the society is changing 
is moving, is involving. While there's something beyond evolution, beyond change, changement, beyond time and space. That's you. That's that's you, the Buddha nature. <laughs> and again, if you can realize this, uh, realize this realization, you're living in a Dharma realm. You're living in a pure awareness. You're living. You're not living in body mind anymore. Body mind becomes your one of your content. You got it. It a limit. And every master that can be called a master realize this. Like Hong Ren, like Dao Xing, like uh, Hui Neng, like Sun Chan, like Hui Ke, like Bodhidharma. I goes back. There's, we have studied the patriarchs, the emptiness. Emptiness does not mean no existence. In, in front of me, but I know it's empty. Emptiness means this bottle has to rely on many, many conditions to be present in front of me. Like manufacturer, like the material from the steel or plastic, right? Home to the room. Even I bought this 10 years ago, I moved from places to places. Its presence in front of for me now is empty again, meaning depending on life. In essence, it does not have a self. That's why we call this is empty. So empty in terms of in relationship to you, the awareness is not empty. The awareness is a permanent existence. Existence does not subject to any condition. Without you, the awareness without world, make sense? Without mirror, without reflection. <laughs> so oh, I always want to try to repeat this again, again, and again. Try to help you to understand literally, theoretically, and eventually you realize this. All the teachings are true. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, on and off. Uh. Mm. Maybe I need a new computer. Yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, maybe <laughs> it's a it's an old computer. It's a and uh, the processor is not fast.
Yes, because from my experience, the, re the repetition of the essence of the teaching actually every every time of repetition actually have a different a little bit uh, new understanding because it's the essence is the source and the the essence contains kind of infinite information so every time we we talk about it or we try to explore it we try to discover it we have new experience because the essence of buddha's teaching contains infinite information energy that's why this is the core that's why this is called essence right essence leads to your life your our everyday life every aspect of life because the awareness is the essence of who you are. Ben Xing, in Chinese, the original pure mind. The original primordial ground in which every experience was born, is born, is arising, and will disappear. That's why, like now, every moment, the essence is as a background. That's the, that's the Zan, that's the Tan teaching, that's the Zen about the, uh, Dongshan Mountain School. So if you go East Mountain School, sorry, East Mountain. So we back to the, the page, East Mountain Teaching. So you can you can hear me better now or still? So East Mountain Teaching. Hongren was significant in the development of early Chinese Chan. The teaching of both Dao Xing and Hongren became known as the East Mountain teachings. But Hongren was one was the more prominent of the two. The East Mountain teachings were seen as authentic Chan Buddhist teaching as promoted by Hongren students. Shen Xiu. So if you still remember, he has two main disciples, Shen Xiu and uh, Hui Neng. So Shen Xiu is in the north, is a northern gradual enlightenment practice. And the Hui Neng is in the south, in the Guangzhou, Hong Kong area. So it's the southern, Southern Southern Enlightenment practice. I hope I suggest both gradual and sudden could should be combined. But if you can realize sudden enlightenment, like you are Buddha already, you have the essence of Buddha nature, like every master's, like every story of enlightenment of every master's, and the gradual. Enlightenment or gradual practice is needed after your sudden awakening because all the uh, gradual practice or you know step by step is to remove the habitual thinking, egoic mind, behavior, and so on because all the habitual thinking thought patterns has influenced us so for many, many years. It's not easy to remove them at once. It takes a little while, like meditation, 
like years of meditation, like years of spiritual study or reading the master's book, following a master, it takes a lot of practice, gradual practice. But it's better you can realize the Buddha nature or the essence, the Brahman, the Atman. I don't, you can use any name to pointing to that uh, essence, that um, <laughs> the light of God, if you would use that too. You realize that essence of who you are, but it takes a little while to remove habitual layers of layers of e ego, you know. That's why um, gradual and sudden practice should be combined. So meditation practice, the last uh, paragraph, view your own consciousness, tranquility, and attentively. Oh, sorry. View your own consciousness tranquilly and attentively so that you can see how it always moving, you see, like flow, flowing water or a glittering mirage. So mirage is empty, it's not real. So it's can um, con contain or denotes the unreal stuff of the mind, of the thoughts, thinking, memory, the emptiness, until its func uh, fluctuations dissolve into peaceful stability. The pure mind that is is not conditioned and cannot be conditioned is always peaceful and still the ripples on the surface of ocean cannot disturb the depths the 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 depth the depths of the ocean i mean i use that an uh, analogy again the our thoughts, memory, like now, actually, we are using the thought, we are using the mind, the conscious mind to talk. It's the activity in the mind, right? Mental activities also includes my body language and so on. But deep inside of the mind, there's a part that is not conditioned and cannot be conditioned cannot be disturbed. So I want you to experience it. It seems you are disturbed by the thinking and thought and the mental activities because you feed your attention on it. If you draw back your attention to the stillness and inner calm, inner stillness, Nothing can move you. Nothing can move you. Nothing can disturb you. Nothing can distract you. And this kind of realization happens after years of meditation. That's why meditation practice is necessary. There's an extremity that, oh, oh, yes, uh, I, I'm... I have this sudden alignment. I don't need any practice anymore because I have this. I'm Buddha already. No, don't go that uh, extremity either. Even you realize you are you are enlightened. Nobody will say he or she is enlightened because enlightenment is like is a is a regional phase. 
you, you just discovered it. Uh, you already it. <laughs> so there's no boasting of, oh, you discovered the original face. You are it already. It's just like, I like the Eckhart Tolle's that uh, analogy. It's like a beggar sitting on a pot, begging on a street, but he doesn't know. Right in his pot, he's, he, he's, uh, he's standing on the pot, which is standing. There's huge golden gold there. <laughs> While he's always begging outside. In, on, in the pot he was standing on, there's gold. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Eckhart Tolle used this analogy. He, yeah, he's awakened one for sure. If you look at the influence, the, as a, like a graph later, you see we have a uh, Hong Ren, then on the top, per se. Pre predecessors, we predecessors, we know that Bodhidharma, then the second, the first is Bodhidharma, the first, the second, the first Bodhidharma, second Hui Ke, third Sun Chan, fourth Dao Xing, fifth Hong Ren, then we have Shen Xiu and Hui Neng. Hui Neng is the sixth patriarch, then we have below the Shen Hui Neng, we have, you see, so many Qing Yuan Xing Si, Nan Yue Huai Rang, He Ze Shen Hui. And then Shi Tou Xi Qian, Ma Zu Dao Yi. You see, after Huai Rang, there's a Ma Zu Dao Yi, which is so famous. Ma Ta Tian Xia, Ma Zu Dao Yi. So, so Ma Zu Dao Yi, then we have, um, Hongzhou school, we have Lingji school. If you pay to the middle in the in the third column, uh, the last uh, row, last second row, there's Lingji school. Lingji school is very influential in Japan, in Korea now. So that's from the Ma Zhu Dao Yi. And Ma Zhu Dao Yi is a student of Nan Yue Huai Rang. Well, Nan Yue Huai Rang is a student of Hui Neng. Hui Neng, the student of the Hong Ren, we studied today, you see. The lineage is going on till now, till this moment. So it doesn't rely on anybody. You see, the truth never subject to anybody. No matter your farmer or cashier in the market or your president of a country, is not subject to anybody. It's, the truth always carries on. It's like space. It's everywhere and where, everywhere, no matter who you are, or no matter what the object is. Uh, the truth goes on and on. The truth is in my mind. It's so I just realize it. It's inside you now. It's around you now. Can you recognize it? The ability to recognize the truth we call wisdom. That's wisdom. Wisdom is, I will say, is deeper or higher than knowledge. Knowledge is not enough. Knowledge, in terms of worldly knowledge, you can play. You can play piano. You can draw a beautiful picture. You can run a business very successfully. I call it knowledge or worldly knowledge. But the wisdom is, is beyond space and time. You see, one day we will lose that ability to run the business after we die. 
we'll you know lose our ability to draw a picture after we die. We'll lose our ability to run a business when we go to get sick, you know, and get old. But there's one ability is beyond birth and death. Is the wisdom that you realize you are not a drop in the ocean, your whole entire ocean in one drop. Okay. <laughs> you realize you're beyond space time. That's called wisdom. Nothing in the space time can really touch you while you can enjoy every content of the space time. You can enjoy every experience while you are beyond every experience. That's the whole thing. That's No matter I'm talking or not talking, no matter you're listening or not listening, no matter you're, we are doing or not doing, there, there is something beyond all these. There's something beyond all the dualities. So if maybe I can sign kind of homework for you, keep reading all the master re uh, stories. You can Google anyone in in interested, encourage you to encourage you to, you know, to help you to Go through the darkness. <laughs> all the stories of enlightenment, all the sages teaching is like a light in the darkness. You can feel it while you're in, not in the mood, while, while you're not depressed. While in the, the worldly distractions, Follow the light. Follow the stories of enlightenment. Follow their teaching, Buddha's teaching too. Don't waste this time. Don't waste this life, actually. Awakening is pri should be our priority. And awakening, there's no conflict between awakening and worldly life or life. It helps our It helps in every aspect of life. It, it, like meditation improves your concentration, improves your 
productivity. You are not so easily disturbed and distracted. You always have that sense of I amness. Your presence is always there. It helps even the physical body too. While your mind is at ease, while your body is relaxed, you're healing yourself. It's the highest healing. The body, mind, spirit now is in harmony. Is in union. You sleep well. You concentrate more. You eat well. You know, your energy is is up. You study more sutras. You listen to more stories of enlightenment. Re you read more the sages books. You're encouraged more. You sleep well again. You sleep well more better. So it's a it's a very good cycle. Once the cycle moves by yourself, like now, like I I experienced this in the past almost ten years. It's like the the fly, the flying wheel of the engine. We have start engine. The, you know, if the old style of that flying wheels, you have used uh, your hand, you know, manually to start the engine. Right. <laughs> Once you that flying wheel, the momentum of the fl flying wheels are huge, are big enough, the engine will start and will start automatically. So all the practice now every twice a week or once a week or every day like this conversation like this sharing is kind of manually start your flying wheel of awakening okay <laughs> until one day you will start every day nobody can stop you anymore because the momentum of your awakening is so huge You are absorbing all the essence from every sages, from every sage. You you are so you are the hub of energy absorbing <laughs> absorption. No one no one can stop it. No matter how how seemingly disturbed the world is, disturbing the world uh, disturbing world is. No matter. How seemingly the world is disturbing or distracting, you are stable. You are still. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Lao Zi, Zhuang Zi, yes, beautiful. <laughs> yes, watch twice, practice more and more until it becomes yours. It becomes your understanding and your love. Actually, everything is a, a love is love. Like the love from nature, love from the water, love from the food, love from the family member, love from the so society love from everything contains the essence of love if you can realize it you are you are lucky man you are the richest man in the world trust me once you find everything every love in everything you are the richest man or woman in the world because that feeling it's beyond money. You see, that feeling encourages you, in, you know, helps you, make you so good.
then you can express your love. You can change relationship by express your love unconditioned. And you don't ask for return. So this is called awakening. You are in the ocean of love. <laughs> You're living in the ocean of love. You try to express your understanding, every love, but, and you try to, it's a two direction, understanding love and express your love. Understanding love and express your love. Understanding love, express your love. It's, a, it's that circulation goes on and on. Is beyond space and time. In every event of space time, there's love. You become love worker. <laughs> love worker, light workers. Yeah, it's like light light workers. They just they just use different terminology. You become a light. Now we are absorbing light. We are absorbing, absorbing energy from the sage's teaching. Until one day that the, the, you have so many energy and the light in yourself, now you, you will express it to your friend, to your family, to your colleague, colleagues. Uh, colleagues to your you know to everyone everyone around you even far away from you <laughs> because again this thing the love or light has no limit of space and time it's like the buddha's teaching influenced me influenced you influenced everybody now it's 2500 years ago right but the love and the light of buddha is beyond space and time. Is sub is not subject to space and time. You're really living in the Dharma realm. If really oh, everything is you and you are everything. <laughs> it's so easy to say, but uh, you know, it's better you understand it and realize it too. <laughs> You are so beautiful. So we are so beautiful. We are so blessed to have this ability to understand of who you are. This understanding is infinite. That's the beauty of awakening. Okay, maybe I we better end this. And I'm sorry, I will be on a cruise for one week. I may not see you. I try to use my mobile. I will try to use my mobile tomorrow. But if not, please forgive me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure the cruise has Wi-Fi or not. So I wish you all the best and keep on practice every moment, every day, every year, every life. <laughs>